considering that we have such five excellent presenters, I, I propose that we spill over 10, 15 minutes into refreshments. And may I then invite, if you will, five presenters, please gather up here. Then I will move over here. So there's space for all five of you. But, but let me be, I think we should, we really, really need to stick to one common question, succinct per person, and then please address it to, to a specific individual. Thank you. Thanks very much. I was just instructed by the, uh, the organizers that this is maximum three questions and let's keep it brief um, because we want to fit people into the, uh, into the lecture. No, brief, brief answers as well. We do want answers. So um, Andrea, I believe, and then the gentleman in the first row and the third question. No, we'll go with the two questions then, please. Uh, uh, the question is uh, particularly for Francois, but applies more generally. Now, even if you include... Um, I mean, even, even if you use the Alvaredo approach and to try to complement the information from household budget surveys, basically you miss another part of the distribution, which is the incomes accrued on asset held abroad. And so these are not domestic incomes, but they are national. Now, and for, instance, for Africa, it looks like that Africa has more assets abroad than, uh, which are bigger than the public debt. So one, the question is, could one, and then Latin America has a lot of money in Miami and uh, the Indians in Mauritius. And so one could uh, try perhaps to, to measure this amount of money. And then you say, well, rate of return, 5% or whatever. And then you're, you're up. No, I mean, I know it's rough. But then if that is the case, I mean, global inequality, I mean, domestic inequality, uh, within inequality would rise. And... Um, Global inequality would certainly uh, decline much less. The question is, is, by how much? Thank you. Can we take the second question at the same time and then we give a chance for answers? Uh, this is again for Professor Borginio and also for Professor Lishi. There might be a certain inevitability to declining inequality at the global level simply from the base effect of growth rates. As if, if it's reasonable to expect that there will be a roughly negative correlation between growth rates of countries and their mean incomes, and if we're talking about very large countries, which have probably already reached some sort of saturation level, then that's going to translate itself into declining inequality when you're dealing with any relative measure of inequality, because the size of the pie is going to come out in the wash. And that might be a case, therefore, for employing also mean-dependent inequality measures, not necessarily absolute measures, but more moderate intermediate measures, such as uh, uh, Atkinson and Brandolini have done, or more recently, uh, De Costa, De Kunk, and Bosmans have done. And I think that might well reverse the picture of declining inequality that you have. Thank you. Great. Would you have a shot at that, Francois, first? There was a third question. I apologize. Please, to the gentleman at the back. The camera was in my way, in my defense. Uh, I just want to ask, uh, well, I don't know if it's a question or a comment, but uh, my observations in Goa seem to be a little uh, sort of opposite to what you described for India, because in Goa we have a very serious shortage of uh, agricultural labor and labor in the construction industry uh, for various reasons. But I wonder if you could comment on that or maybe do some research on it. <laughs> yes, Francois, please. Okay, quickly, because of the time constraint. On, uh, on the last point about uh, assets abroad, uh, yes, I mean, it's a very good point, and uh, certainly something which is completely uh, ignored in national uh, inequality figures, I mean, everywhere. So it is definitely uh, uh, something uh, uh, interesting and uh, there is one way we could uh, look at it, but, uh, uh, okay, it will take time. I think you're aware of the work by Gabriel Zuckman, 
and uh, by other, I don't remember, his uh, colleague in Sweden uh, on uh, assets abroad. I mean, what kind of wealth is being uh, invested by uh, the residents of one country abroad? Uh, there is more and more of that because uh, the Bank for the International Settlement is uh, providing uh, data on this. So there's something possible. Uh, but uh, the work I've seen on, uh, based on those data and uh, on, uh, in Africa, I mean, for African residents, accounts uh, held by African residents in uh, foreign countries, the uh, impact, I mean, of course, you will be increasing the share of income of those people. But uh, when you say, for example, that uh, this is much bigger than uh, the debt of the country, etc., it is not that 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 high, but I mean this is something that we can uh, that we can discuss on uh, mean dependence of inequality measures. Yes, I mean I, I agree with that, and uh, uh, I mean we had uh, long talks with uh, uh, Tony Atkinson and Andrea Brandolini about uh, their uh, measure of uh, uh, poverty, global poverty, inequality, etc. Uh, one of the problem with that is simply is to know what, what is exactly that we want to. Uh, capture. If you want to capture inequality, global inequality, from the global community point of view, uh, then uh, I think that uh, looking at standard Gini, etc., is uh, what we should do. When you introduce mean dependent, this means that you introduce some sensitivity of people in a given country to inequality within that country. Uh, so we are adding something else. Uh, and this is a rather uh, strong uh, uh, normative assumption, uh, and I'm not sure that uh, we uh, we want to, to 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 get into that. The figures I've shown are uh, were also kind of uh, uh, introduction to another uh, way of looking at global inequality, which I uh, I'm looking at uh, these days, which is uh, to consider that global inequality. Uh, you may consider that the problem is what is the reference group for everybody in the global community? Do people look only at their fellow citizen? In which case, global inequality should be the average of national inequality? Or is it the case that uh, people look at all the other people in the world? Or is it the okay case that they weight, the way they give to their fellow citizen is above the way they give to uh, other people. In other words, distance, geographic distance, would matter in measuring global inequality. So there are different uh, uh, directions in which we can go. But again, I mean, this is relying on normative assumptions. And uh, what I was trying to present is a more simple and more positive view at uh, uh, global inequality. Thank you very much. Can, can we just do? One India? minute responses for an addition. It's, I think, no, no, please go on, Peter. Just to, to reply very quickly on the question for about Goa. I mean, I would. I think that the, the the shortages of agricultural labor and the shortages of construction workers are quite possibly one of the explanations that we see for the very rapid rise in agricultural wages in in, in India as a whole. I would assume as these labor as these markets are getting tighter, you would see the the the, the effect in in the agricultural wage rates. It's just possibly what's a, what's a part of the story there. But I have to say I'm not an expert on Goa, and I do look forward to looking into that question further. Thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, Professor Lishi, there was a question addressed to you directly. Yeah, yeah I, I just mentioned the, some is a correlation between economic growth and the income equality, something like that. Uh, that is just based on Chinese case, you see. That means when we have very high yeah, economic growth, that means some people, rich people, benefit more from that. Uh, but even you have lower income growth, perhaps also, yeah, perhaps the, even the less people, yeah, uh, poor people, even benefit less. So perhaps if we have just a moderate growth rate, like five, six percent, something mm -hmm. like that, that have no, you see, uh, negative impact on the you see unemployment something like that. Even in the the Chinese case, now we just have no surplus laborers. That means 
in this you see situations perhaps moderate moderate growth rate perhaps benefit more to the poor or lower income group something like that that is perhaps just based on the Chinese case may not be uh, applicable to other countries something like that. Thank you very much. Any final remark? I'm aware this is a bit unfair to the panel, Murray, Nora. Otherwise, then thank you very much to all, and let's give a big hand to the presenters.